first heard this song, it just kind of grabbed my heart and blew me away. <laughs> and I thought, wow, uh, what a beautiful song. I don't know if I can hit the high notes, but it's just a beautiful song. So I hope it blesses y'all. Nothing else is going to matter. When we see his face, when we meet him, when he gathers us all, oh, can you just imagine? Well, I want to give.
give you a little bit of uh, rundown about the Book of Judges. Um, the Book of Judges is, is named after the form of leadership that was over Israel at the time. Between the time of Joshua's death and the beginning of Israel's monarchy. Now, when I say monarchy, that means a rule of kings, you know, like our in Britain. But um, Judges covers a period of about 400 years. And Joshua had just died. And Joshua was the one who led the captives over into the promised land. Remember, Moses uh, gave the mantle to Joshua to, to carry on from him, much like we pass on things to the next one who's lying. And uh, Joshua just died, and he had been the leader since Moses. And he had been a, a type, a picture of Jesus, if you could... Um, kind of in symbol on it, symbol, biblical religion, you've been type of a picture of Jesus Christ. Now, um, because Joshua's name is Jesus, I mean, and Yeshua. So Joshua, Jesus, Jesus is really Joshua in the, in the Hebrew and in Arabic and, and um, Yeshua, some say, Yehoshua, some say, it, uh, it's pronounced different ways. So it, it's a picture type because Joshua was the only one at that time who could have led everybody out of captive into the promised land. Just like Jesus is the only one who's going to lead us out into heaven. He's the only way. Scripture says it's not by anybody else but through Jesus Christ. And that's the one thing you can tell Jehovah's Witnesses if you ever have a problem with that. You know, the scripture that says, you know, they're always about Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Even in their meeting places, they have Jehovah over them. But scripture says there's no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus. Because God the Father handed that to his son, Jesus. He's the leader. Now, um... Now, uh, let's see. Now, Eleazar had died also. And his son, um, Phineas, will become the priest in his place. Now, people at that time, they, they seemed to do whatever they wanted to do. And we're living in a time like that today, aren't we? People are doing whatever they want to do. They're not going by what God says to do. They're going about what they want to do in the flesh. Now, because, see, since Joshua had died, they didn't have somebody else that would lead like him. They didn't have a strong leader stand up and say what was right and what we needed to be doing. So they started to do what was right in their own eyes. Matter of fact, I think I... There's 12 judges there, and uh, I, I put them on the screen so you know who they are. And the ones that I have abbreviated... Uh, that are ca all caps. So those are the six major uh, judges, and there's six minor judges. Now, notice number four. She was a major judge. And uh, you, you have ministers who want to skip over that fact, but she did lead Israel. She was a leader, she was a judge. That puts her behind a, a pulpit because she's leading, right? So I'm not going to fight for women or men or whoever, but whoever stands behind the pulpit, I want you to understand it's not female or male. It's the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. There's no sex there. It's, a, it's, it's His Word that's coming forth from whoever. Um. In Judges, we're going to see a, a couple of, as we go through it, we're going to see a couple of phrases, too. And number one is, uh, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. You're going to hear that all the way through the book of Judges. You're going to also hear, in those days, Israel had no king. They had no one to lead them. And uh, do you guys get that up for a little while? 
And then number two, in those days Israel had no king, and then everyone did what was right in their own eyes. There's some strong lessons that we can learn from the book of Judges, and number one is the fact that everybody's doing what they want to do. When did you ever think that we live in a time where they want you to find what a woman is? They want you to explain what a male is. Or change the definition of the word recession. Yeah. When did you think you'd ever live in a time like that when we got these words in the dictionary to explain what they are, but you got somebody in the government saying, oh no, just because it's in a book don't mean it's right. <laughs> no. Man is wanting to do and say and redefine what man is wanting to do. That's not what God's word says. We live by what God's Word says. And when we stand up and live by what God's Word says, people say, well, you're judging me. Yeah. You're a racist. You're, being, you're, you're just angry and hate. And No, it's the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. They want to trip us up, and it's not like that. It's time for Christians to stand up and have their voice heard. Amen. We have a voice. We have a sound. And it's God's holy sound. Amen. Back in the old days, when you went to battle in biblical times, they blew the shofar. There were different signals and tones to the shofar when they blew for for uh, worship, when they blew for war, when they when they blew as uh, there was always three long toots or two long toots or one really long one. They knew, and I don't know what they are offhand, but they knew how to sim signal their people to come, to pray, to fight, to war. We need to be on our knees and on our face before God in this time that we stand today. Never in my life would I have seen on TV a 16-year-old overtake a police officer. I mean, I watched that over and over and I'm thinking, there is no way that 16-year-old kid should be getting the better of that police officer. There's no respect for our leaders. There's no respect for the badge anymore. There's no respect for, for a pastor. There's no respect for, for anyone that stands in leadership in ministry anymore. They laugh at you. But never our God has the last say. Yes, he does. And it doesn't matter if you think you're losing the battle. In the end, you're not. Because he's already won. I read the end of the book. We win. Evil loses. That doesn't mean there's going to be some battles and some tribulations in your life, because there is going to be. We just got to stand firm and fight till the last breath. That one poem that says, I will not go quietly into the night. That's how we have to be. We will not go quietly. We're going to stand. Joshua, that the sons of Israel inquired of the Lord, saying, Who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? Now, excuse me, but I, in the book of Joshua, God had told them to take out the Canaanites. So why are they having to go back up and go back to fight them again? Because they didn't take them out the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. Now I look at this as a little fox in our life. You know, we can learn a lesson from this first scripture right here. If we don't take out the things that God has shown us to take out of our flesh, our life, <laughs> it's going to come back to get us. And it may overtake our life in the end. It may be drugs, it may be alcohol, it may be sex, it may be uh, a lust, it may be something you're doing you're not supposed to be doing, maybe maybe uh, uh, sugar, 
Maybe God's spoken to you about eating too much sugar. Maybe you have sugar. I'm sorry, I'm not picking on people. You know, I have that too. <laughs> I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying, maybe God has been dealing with you. You need to deal with it to get this out of your life. You need to cut it out, overtake it, get it out. Maybe he's told you. You need to deal with that anger problem. You need to cut it out of your life. You need to deal with your heart issue. Because if you don't deal with it, it's going to overtake you. And it's going to take you out. It can mean your life. It can mean a marriage. It can mean a loved one. Uh, verse 2. The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. Then Judah said to Simeon, his brother came up with, with me into the territory allotted me, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I in turn will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him, and Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they defeated 10,000 men at Bezek. Now, how they, how they uh, deciphered who was going to go up. Now, if you remember in Joshua, there at the end part, uh, they decided and made decisions from the Urim and Thummim. And that was two stones that was kept inside the priest's vest. And how they did that was, sometimes it says in there, they cast lots. Well, that would be like, uh, in our day, let's just say this. I'm not, so you'll understand. I, the breast had stones on it of each tribe. They had a color. And inside that vest, they, had, they kept the stones. Well, let's just say, well, which tribe should go up? And let's just say the, the priest wrenched inside his pocket, pulled out whatever stone he pulled out. Well, no, it's not Judah. It would be black or white, the stones. Black would be no, yet white would be yes. Uh, then, then they'd reach in, another tribe would come up. They'd reach in, and it'd be like no. And then they got down to the white stone, which was Judah. That's how they decided that Judah would go and fight. Everybody understand? That's really, I, I think it was more the stones would shine a color, uh, light up. Like the light of the Lord would shine on the stone. One of them, one of them would catch your eye more than the other. But I, I don't know for sure. I don't think anybody understands the human human correctly. Theologians say different things. So, you know, it's not a certain thing. So rather than the, have everybody confused, I just thought, well, reach in your pocket, pull out a, but that's, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing that's how it was done. But um, anyway, they found the Donai Bezek and uh, Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Pezerites. But Adonai Bezek uh, fled, and they pursued him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his big toes. Now, hmm. Why would they cut the thumbs off of your hand and your big toes off? Now, at biblical times, they used bows and arrows and swords. So, Sheila, how hard is it to pull a bow back correctly and aim at that target without your thumb? You know, or sword. How could you hold a sword correctly without your thumb and fight? It'd be falling out of your hand. And your big toe is what balances you. Yeah. So if you don't have your big toe, you can't run very fast. So they catch you. So it was a way for military forces to um, render the enemy crippled so they could get them. Adonai Bezek said, 70 kings with their thumbs and their big toes cut off, used to gather up scraps under my tables, as I have done. So God has repaid me. So they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. What he's actually saying is, this is something we need to pay attention to. 
a lesson here. Israel at this time was doing what they thought right in their own eyes. Now, this is a pagan king that used to catch the Israelites, and how they rendered and got the Israelites and defeated them is by cutting off their thumbs and their toes. It rendered them crippled so they could then kill them. Now you have the Israelites doing the same thing to the enemy. They're now catching the enemy, cutting off their thumbs and their toes. Did God tell them to do that? Did God think that they ran so fast he couldn't catch them? No. Israelites started following after the custom of the other king. Whenever, remember God would always tell them not to marry the wives of a different nation because their custom of worshiping pagan gods would be brought into the camp. Same thing here. They're starting to follow after the custom of another king. So that's a downward spiral. Whenever we start following the customs of the world out there today, Oh, well, they're doing it. If it's okay for them, it must be okay for me. I mean, oh, they drink a, a couple drinks before they go to bed at night, so if they think it's okay, then it must be okay for me. It doesn't matter. I'm an alcoholic. And God's already said no and cut it out. God says no. God says no. Not what the world is doing. Don't look out there at the world and think that looks all good, because believe me, you, it does not. It is not good. I don't care how much money somebody has. I don't care how many material things somebody has. That does not mean they have the peace and happiness in their heart that God can bring you. Right? How many men and women with that have millions of dollars and then they lost it in the stock market and then the next day you hear they commit suicide. Are they happy? No. Happiness comes from our heart in knowing that we are walking in God's laws and what He has called us to do. And happiness is knowing that you're walking every day with Him. You're getting up in the morning and you're talking to Him throughout the day. That's prayer. If you're just talking to God all throughout the day like you've got a best friend there by your side, you know, that is prayer. God wants you to be close to Him like that. He wants you to ask Him questions. He wants you to say, what do you think of this, Lord? You know, should I do that, Lord? Show, show me, Lord. Just, just let me know. And before you know it, a brother walks in or calls you on the phone and says, you know what I've been thinking about? I've been thinking about this. Well, uh -uh. there's the answer. It comes from all different things. You might hear a song on the radio. There it is. Someone might call you on the phone. Someone might stop over. God, God speaks to us in all different kinds of ways. It's just that we're not paying attention. We're not listening because we're too focused on our business. We're too focused on doing our own thing. We've got our own little craft ideas going on. Our own little painting ideas. I'm preaching it myself. Going on. You know, we're too busy to be getting in God's Word and studying two or three hours a day. We don't got enough time. I hear that all the time. I don't got time. I don't got time. Run here, run in there. Before you know it, time goes by, and you look at your granddaughter, and she's five foot taller than last time you seen her. Yeah. My granddaughter was here last time I really visited with her. Now she's like here. COVID was a year. And then then she got out of the habit of coming to Grandma's. So it was about another four or five months. And now she's like 14 and a half. And, and I'm like looking at her going, when did you get my size? <laughs> it's an eye opener. You know? We've got to stop being so busy that we don't do life. Because life is the people we're involved with. Uh -huh. Life is the people we love. Uh -huh. Life is fellowship. Life is relationship. Uh -huh. Life is a gathering together. Just like this little body here. We're our 
our church home. We may be small, but we're powerful when we go to prayer. Right? If you don't have someone close to you in your life, like relationship, then I, I'm, you know, I worry that we're not getting it. Because Jesus was all about relationships. Yes. He was all about love. Yes. He was all about the gathering of family. He was all about that. He loves you today. You're not a failure. He loves you. He wants to help you get up out of that mess. He wants to help you overcome what situation you're in right now. He wants to help you. He doesn't want to say, I told you not to do that now, and you shouldn't have done that. Now see the mess you're in? That's not a loving father. A loving father says, here, honey, let me help you up. Come on, Daddy has showed you. I, I don't care if you fall. It's okay. I'll, I'll help you up. We'll, we'll walk down that road together. Here, see, I'll show you. It's like this. One step. Then the next step. Our loving Father will show us if we pay attention, He'll take our hand and He'll walk us there. One baby step at a time. None of us are perfect. You know, we beat ourselves up way too much. None of us are perfect. We're going to make mistakes over and over and over. We better wake up and know our God loves us. My goodness, He died on that cross. He took all that suffering and that pain for us. He took all those whips for us and the skin ripping out of his body for us. And we stand there and think that we've just done too much wrong that he can't forgive us. Pride. That's pride. Uh -huh. He done everything for you. Uh -huh. Everything. Because he loves you. I don't care how many times you fall. He'll, he'll help you back up. Thank you, he'll help you back up. I forgot the weevil wobble. <laughs> Actually bought a weevil. I'm sorry about the subject. Actually bought a weevil wobble and filled it up with air because Richard had preached one time and he talked about a weevil wobble. You remember those old things you used to punch and they'd go over and then come back up yeah. and hit you? Well, I was going to let everybody hit that thing and then let it come back up. And it shows you we got to stay in the fight. We've got to be ready for battle, people. When we hit that thing, we're hitting the devil. But yet, he's going to come back up at us. See, he's going to come back up at us. But the more we hit him, the more we get stronger yeah. and stronger yeah. and stronger. And before long, guess what? That thing's going to leak out of air because you hit it so many times. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he can't come and hit you strong anymore to knock you down because you know how to fight him. Because you've got the weapons now to overcome him because you've hit him so much, you've knocked him out of air. Uh -huh. He can't hit you anymore like he used to hit you because you've learned how to fight. I, am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, I hope so. Amen. It was an example. The more we pray, the more we can read his word, the more we stand on his word and get in the fight and punch him and punch him and punch him, the stronger we become. Memorize the scripture. Repeat it over. Hey, you're talking to, uh, what was the guy who never could remember any? My memory's like that. Because I once I was knocked out when I was a kid on one side, and then it got knocked out on the other side. So my memory, my short-term memory has always been bad. But if you memorize scripture and you have your cards at home, I don't care if you just pick seven. It's a, it's a good number. Let's pick seven. Memorize seven scriptures that really grab your heart. Put them on cards. Post them on your refrigerator. Every time you see it, recite it. Before you know it, you can remember those scriptures and pull them up when you're in need. When you're in a hospital and one of your loved ones has had a heart attack. And you don't know, what's gonna, you, you don't know what to do. Right there is that scripture. You can pull it up. I stand on the truth of God. He is with me at every moment. He is with me. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. God is there. 
He never leaves you. He's there. When you're in a hospital bed and you're lonely because nobody comes and sees you, guess who's there? God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, say, thank you, God. You showed up. Thank you, God. You're here. You love me. I got weight off the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's good. God is good. You know, it, it, as many times as I have uh, went over the scriptures and how many times God's told people to, God, to go in and, and take everything, not leave nothing behind, he's telling that to our flesh. Yes. Go in, cast everything out, leave nothing there, surrender all to me. Surrender all of your heart to me. I want nothing left to be in there. Nothing left to be in there. Do you still have like thoughts of like, you remember things you did in your past, you know, and you go, oh God, forgive me, I'm sorry, I, I wish I wouldn't have done that. That happened to me for a few years, you know. I mean, oh Lord, forgive me. And, and, and pretty soon the Lord said, I've already forgiven you for that. You're the one that keeps beating yourself up over it. Because when it's under the blood, it's under the blood. Yeah, that's right. He washes you clean with that. Nobody can understand, how can God wash me white as snow with red blood? Because he's God. Amen. We don't understand that with our human mind. Because we have a human mind. But he's all powerful, all mighty, all sovereign, all deliverer, all healer. He's our mighty conqueror. He can do anything, and when he's coming back, he's coming back as a warrior. He's not coming as the lamb. That's right, amen. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. So if there's anything in my heart that needs to go, it needs to go. Yeah. It needs to go. I don't care if it's jealousy because one ministry's growing and mine's not. That needs to go. Whatever it is. I don't care if it's anger, it needs to go. If it's unforgiveness from a loved one, somebody hurts you in your past, you can't seem to let go of it because they did you so wrong, let go of it and forgive them because God forgave you. Amen. Amen. Don't let that unforgiveness hold you back because it's killing you, not the other person. John, I meant to call you this week to, to ask you to, if you wanted to ask your daughter to come up here, the church would find a way to go down and get her. Not right now. Not right now. Okay. We'll just know that we're here and we will go down and get her and bring her back up. Okay. And we'll find some place for her if you don't got room for her, we'll find a place for her to stay. And with that empty house over there, I'll put it in there for her. <laughs> but anyway, we've got to take care of our people. Amen. Amen. We'll find a way. Yes. God will show us and lead us. And I truly believe that and trust that. God will show us and, uh, and show us where and show us how. And we'll overcome. As long as we stay focused on Him. Yes. And I'm talking about the days to come because, you know, everybody keeps saying, oh, it's, it'll get better. <laughs> it'll get better. It's not going to get any better. My Bible does not say that. We just got to know it's coming. And keep our focus on Him. Amen. Keep our prayer life close to Him. Because God will lead you. He knows. He, he, hey, you know what? God created you. He knows your eye color. He knows every hair on your head. God created you. 
So he knows how to talk to you, too. Right? Sometimes he has to hit me over the head, but he knows how to get your attention. Every one of us, every one of us, he knows how to get our attention. And if you trust in God with your whole heart, he will lead you. And he will show you the way. And he will take care of you. Whether it's food, whether it's water, whether it's clothing, anything. If he feeds the birds, he can feed you. But our church family needs to stick together. Any church family needs to stick together. So that's, that's all I have for today. And I only got down to, what, nine. Sorry, Richard. I'm just going to say there's a 13th church. Well, I don't know. No, that no. <laughs> They God, say Barack. God's going to be the Oh, okay. Okay. He's going to judge the ten of the time. So there's 13. What is that? Okay. There's only one. Now. I'll accept God. But I thought he was going to say Barack. You know. He didn't want to, he didn't want to take the call because Deborah, he didn't want to do it. So I God chose about, Deborah. I was talking about the judge of all judges. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's God. Judge of all judges. God. Everybody's heart clear. If you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation, God Amen. says. Today. Today is the day of salvation. I'm here for prayer. If anybody needs prayer, you can come up and we'll lay hands on you and pray for you. If you want to ask the Lord in your heart, you can come up and I'll pray with you. Simple as that, okay? God loves everybody. If you feel that tug, please don't turn away from that tug because every time you turn away from it, that's one less calling God's going to give you. So, let's say a prayer to the Lord. Father, I just thank you for this word, Lord. I, I pray that it touched hearts today, God. Lord, I pray you deal with our hearts, Lord. Time is short. If we don't know you, Lord, I pray that we come to know you better and better each and every minute of every day. And, Lord, that we walk in your way, not in our own way. For we need to be able to hear you clearly, Lord, when you speak to us. It's just like tuning in a radio station, Lord. We need to tune you in so we can hear you, Lord, so that we can follow up what you're calling us to do, Lord. Because we don't want to be about fleshly things, God. Not if you're not in it, Lord. We want to be about what you have called us to do. Who you have called us to speak to, Lord. Who you have called us to take grocery rewards to. Who you have called us to help people in a time of need, God. We want to be about your work, not our own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, we do, but I still will pray. Anybody needs prayer, please come up. I'm going to turn off the live. Yep.